Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Bay City Players as we present something a little different this week. My name is Mike Wisniewski, and I am glad you have joined us for our 11th online performance. Last week, we brought you an original play by Michigan playwright Sean Paravente. Tonight, we are thrilled to present four original short plays by four different playwrights hailing from Illinois, Maryland, New York, and Rhode Island. They are Sarah Bowden, Robert, Robin Barron, CJ Yerlich, and Judd Lear Silverman. Bay City Players is excited to participate in the Make Art Virtual Campaign started by our friends at Midland Center for the Arts. We would also like to thank our season sponsors, Chemical Bank, Independent Bank, Landau Packaging Systems, Skorupski Family Funeral Home and Cremation Services, Wildfire Credit Union, and Michigan Sugar. Bay City Players is dedicated to our mission of providing high quality theatrical experiences for the entertainment, education, and enrichment for all members of the community. The show must go on, but virtually. So if you're enjoying our virtual performances brought to you by all the original playwrights, please consider making a donation by going to our website and click the donate button. Now tonight we do out of our four playwrights, we do have two of them that are joining us tonight, um, not only for our performance, but they are also narrating their um, their own plays. They are Sarah Bowden and CJ Yerlich. And I would invite them to say a little bit about the, their plays and tell you what they're about. Hello, I'm Sarah Bowden. I'm a playwright from Chicago, Illinois. And The Amazing Adventures of Not Batman is about a romance novelist who is torn between her love of writing romance novels to pay her rent and her love secret love of comic book characters that she would rather be writing. So in the play, you get to see a writer torn literally between her two inspirations, uh, inspired by my own struggle with that while I was still in school. So I hope you enjoy it. And I'm CJ Ehrlich, and I wrote All's Fair in Love and Science, which is about the ultimate in helicopter parenting, two dads who discover it's a very high stakes game, the elementary school science fair. Great, thank you very much. Now with our doors still closed, we are grateful to use this platform to connect with each other. So feel free to comment as the show goes on and let us know what you think. Our cast comes to you with little rehearsal time and without access to our theater has found props to use from their own home as well as costumes. So if you are interested in participating in future programs such as this, please send us a message on our Facebook page or message myself, MJ Wisniewski personally, and I will add you to our list. Also stay tuned for our next performance, more about that at the end of the show. Now, Cass, when I call your name, give a wave to the audience and let them know your character's name and or which plays you are in. Jessica McFarland. Hi, I'm Jessica McFarland. I'm from Bay City, and I will be in The Amazing Adventures of Not Batman. Jean Champy. Hi, I'm Jean Champy, and I will be in, also in The Amazing Adventures of Not Batman, and also in After the Flood and About Time, and I'm currently broadcasting live from Midland. Kyle Sanborn. I am Kyle. I'm in Midland, Michigan. I'll be in The Amazing Adventures of Not Batman, as well as All's Fair in Love and Science. And Jim Stewart. Hi, I'm Jim Stewart. I'm also in Midland, and I'm going to be in uh, All About, or About Time, All's Fair in Love and Science, and After the Flood. Okay, and tonight we have Jacob Kaufman behind the scenes, making sure everything runs and sounds um, smooth. Last but not least, our narrators for tonight are Ann Kukla and two of our playwrights, Sarah Bowden and CJ Yerlich. So thank you for joining us tonight. Now sit back, hopefully you have a drink and a snack in hand and enjoy our four short plays. The Amazing Adventures of Not Batman. Karen sits at her laptop. Leo stands nearby, facing the audience. 
She's proclaiming her love in a dramatic fashion while Karen types. Oh, Mordecai, there's nothing in this barren wasteland for two such as us. You with your wild heart and me with my scandalous, independent ways. She looks into his steely eyes and knew that the time was right. Leah reached up, untied white strings of her bonnet, and violently flung the whole contraption to the grass. <gasps> That's what I think of the community. Cow plowing, clean living. She drew closer to him. Let them shun me. If I can't be with you, then I won't be Amish. He held her gaze with fiery eyes and said, oh, no, maybe she talks some more. Oh, come on, Karen, you're on deadline. This draft is due in an hour. Just finish the big declaration of love scene. She speaks, then he speaks, and they kiss and waltz off into the wheat field together. The end. Instant romance classic. Just find the words. Not Batman runs on. He is not dressed like Batman, nor associated with Batman in any way. He is Karen's unfinished creation, and he wears a ragtag superhero outfit and cape. Biff, sock, kablamo! What the hell? Don't worry, chum. Not Batman is here to save your day. Not Batman? That's right, and my adventure begins now. What are you talking about? Where did you even come from? From the dark recesses of, recesses of your mind, of course. Today, for the first time, there was a crack of light in the walls of my dungeon. I snuck through, and here I am. Okay. I'm a grown woman. I'm not thinking. I'm, I'm reading. I'm writing about Leah over there. Hello. Madam, but more to the point, vengeance. Look. I don't know who you are or, or how you got into my head, but it's time to go. I have to finish this draft by six or I don't make rent, please. I don't have room for new inspiration right now. But what if I am your true inspiration? A guy named Not Batman? You just haven't come up with a better moniker yet. Use your detective skills, sniff one out. Here's a hint. It probably lies in the tragedy of my origin story. One night, there was a terrible industrial accident at the chemical plant where my parents worked, and I vowed to seek justice for what I viewed as their fishy corporate murders. No, no, quit narrating. I don't care. You have to care. You've already given me life. <sighs> Leah circled her arms around Mordecai's strong mountainous back and continued. I'll follow you to the ends of the earth. Let us walk across the wheat field and leave this place forever. We'll set up a little lair just north of the city where we'll watch over the citizens as dark protectors. Using the shadows to fight crimes committed by business type billionaires in broad daylight. No, stop doing that. I'm not doing anything, you typed it. Listen to me. You are writer's block and that's all. I don't care about you and, and I don't know you. Oh, but you know her. You've never even been west of Trenton. <gasps> oh, God. Say that isn't so. It doesn't matter. I, I've read very well researched books about the Pennsylvania Dutch. Books? Only books? Then... My whole life has been a lie. The butter churning, the barn raising, even the buggy riding. Yes, you're a fictional character. Right, so if you wouldn't mind leaving us alone, Leah. Oh. I I'm not giving her over to you. I need a paycheck. So somebody better confess the true love before six or I swear to God, Harlequin's getting my pretentious short stories from college where wallpaper drives housewives insane. Well, I don't feel like speaking just now. Jesus, why does this gig have to be so hard? Well, fortunately, I have plenty to say. Vengeance! 
you are the furthest thing from my reality. Meaning? How many women make a living writing superheroes? It could be one more woman. It could be one woman more if you'd let your imagination fly free, like my acrobatic leaps across the rooftops. But starting in a new field? What if I can't hack it? You'll never know until you try. Actually, I do have something to say. You'll never cut me. You'll rule the day you ever cross me, Avenging Angel. <laughs> you did it! I have a name! Well, you'll rue the day you ever poisoned our drinking water with fluoridation, corporate harpy. <laughs> no, wait, I'm not. How about you, hero? But you can't. Bam. Leo, not Batman, fight in the most bombastic way possible. Bam. Stop. Buff. <laughs> Karen runs yes. between them, ending the fight. Stop. I can't hear myself think. Okay. Okay, if, if we're gonna screw romance and start over somewhere else, we're gonna do it right. Farewell, Madam Creator. Tell Mordecai he better treat you like a queen or, or I'll have your father come after him with a pitchfork. Ooh, wouldn't that be exciting? Leah runs off with a dramatic flourish. Karen sits at her laptop, takes a breath. All right, here goes something. Type. It was a dark morning in the capital city. High above in the skyscrapers, the toxic sunlight was pierced by the black cape of the avenging angel. Whether or not he saved a single soul, whether or not he made a serious impact, he had to admit this job was the greatest thrill of his life. There was nothing else he'd rather be doing at this moment. As the lights fade, Karen types, but faster, easier than before. The end. Our next play is by playwright Robin Barron. It is titled About Time. Jim's watch and clock store is about to be sold to a developer. However, Diane helps Jim find a new way to spend his time. The setting is a watch and clock store in Forest Hills, New York. The time is the present. At the rise, Jim is sitting in his workspace examining a watch. Diane enters. Hello? Uh, excuse me, I I'd like to ask, uh, ask you a question. You don't have to shout. Yes, but... I'd, I'd like to discuss my problem over here. And I'm in the middle of something, so you'll have to wait. Are, are you always so rude to all your customers? Are you always so impatient you can't wait? It is, if that's the way you're going to be, I'll, I'll take my watch over to the shop in Forest Hills. Oh, watch? Uh, yes, a, a watch. I mean, I would have thought you might be familiar with the word, given you're surrounded by watches. Sorry, I, I thought you were someone else. <laughs> Another customer? No, a, a developer is about to throw me out of my store. Well, it, it, it doesn't matter. Throw you out of your store? That's terrible. But, but this store is, has been here since forever. Oh, 1946. My grandfather started it. Well, no, actually, he had a shop downtown before World War II. No, no, my great-grandfather used to be a peddler, fixing and selling watches. <laughs> wow. Yep, you're looking at the uh, last of my kind. I'm a dinosaur about to go extinct. <clears throat> so, uh, you brought me a watch. Oh, right, right, here. Oh, let's see. It's a, it's a man's watch. It, it was my husband's. Oh, was? Ex-husband? Uh, no. Oh. He, um, he, he died. It, it's silly. The, the way he died? 
know, know that, that it's been 10 months and I, I still have trouble telling people that he died. Well, did he die in an embarrassing way? No, he, he didn't die in some embarrassing way. I mean, he, he had a heart attack at, at home watching football, nothing scandalous. I just thought maybe that's why you were feeling awkward about telling people your husband died. We did have an argument earlier in the day. Was it about the watch? No, it wasn't about the watch. It was about the toilet seat. He left it up again for the hundredth time in a row. Oh, you counted. I'm guessing. <laughs> I mean, he was good about that, you know, leaving the seat down for years and years. Suddenly he started leaving the seat up. Well, he was getting older. It was easier. Maybe. <laughs> I just feel guilty about arguing with him uh, on the last day of his life. Well, was the toilet seat uh, the argument the last time you spoke? No, no, it was hours earlier, but I still feel guilty. I mean, such a silly thing to argue about. Do you remember to keep the toilet seat closed? No, uh, I always leave it the way I please. Oh, doesn't your wife mind? <laughs> My wife died 15 years ago. I doubt she thinks about what I do with the toilet seat. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, don't be. I was kind of relieved when she ran off with my next door neighbor. Oh, that's, that's awful. <laughs> Not really. Her idea of fun was going to the mall. Now that some other guy's holding her purse, I'm out riding my bike and hiking. <laughs> I like bike riding and hiking. Also birding. Oh, birding. Um, did you see Murray? Murray? Yeah, the, the large parrot sitting on his perch right over there. Oh, no, I, I didn't see a parrot. To, where? Well, there he is. Look. Oh. Oh, I, now I see him. <laughs> oh, hello, Murray. What a gorgeous parrot you are. <laughs> is he friendly? Well, only to friendly people. Murray, Murray hates my landlord. Ah, he's a smart bird. Yeah, he's gorgeous. He's a hyacinth macaw. He is gorgeous. Yeah, he belonged to my dad. I inherited Murray and the shop. Murray was the best part of this deal. Yeah, let me look at this here. I think I got it. It, it originally belonged to my husband's father. Do you think it's worth fixing? Yeah, it looks like it just needs a new battery. Doesn't cost very much. Or you could just uh, check the clock on your iPhone like everyone else does. Ugh, that's awful. It is awful. Getting thrown out of my store is really awful. <laughs> but you know what's, what is really awful? What's that? I hate watches. I, I, I didn't catch that. <clears throat> I don't like watches. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes. I hate watches and clocks. Well, not their faces or the insides, but the constant tick, 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 ticking off each second of my life every single day. Tick, tick, tick. It's, it's, it's like a beating heart. It's, oh, um, sorry. I wasn't talking about your husband. That's, that's okay. So, so why do you do it? Well, because my dad got ill and he needed help. But you know what? Even when I changed my degree to business and rescued the store, you know what? What? My parents... We're still more proud of my brother than me. After you saved the business and you hate clocks? And watches. <laughs> You're a hero. Oh, not really. No, you saved their business. You are a hero. I saved it for a while. For how long? Let's see, uh, 30 years. <laughs> wow, 30 years. <laughs> Sounds rather heroic to me. Yeah, uh, maybe. Yep, here, I uh, put a battery in here for you. Yep, your watch is uh, as good as new. Uh, oh, how much do I owe you? Uh, no charge. Oh, I, I couldn't. No, it's okay. Maybe you'll, uh, you'll buy me a battery sometime. I could buy you a cup of coffee. You could. <laughs> when are you free? Well, anytime I want. I'm the boss here, you know. Well, for now, anyway. Well, how about now? Sure. 
Oh, and uh, one more thing. Uh, yes? I want you to know that when I was married. Yes? I always put the toilet seat down. <laughs> Jim and Diane exit the end. All's Fair in Love and Science by C.J. Ehrlich. At RISE, the gym of Eunice Shriver Elementary School, the third grade science fair, a Friday night in March. Beneath the basketball net is a collapsible table laid out with neat rows of store brand cookies on trays and a bowl of punch. Scott Waterstone, still in his business suit, sits in a folding chair texting like lightning. Vince Leavenworth, a wall of a man, ambles over. Vince selects a cookie, savors its aroma. Scott mm. politely ignores him. Smart bunch, ain't they? Mm. Yeah, they are. Everyone above average. Hey, I don't follow. How is there an average? And no one is below average. Scott finishes his text and gets up. Uh, you're, uh, sorry, you're... Uh, Dominic's dad, Vince. Parents' night. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Flanagan's? Fish tank. Oh, yes. You. Oh, <laughs> uh, glad I wasn't the one who sat on that bookshelf. Yeah. My daughter never would have forgiven me if Bubba had... Uh, drowned. That's what they call it. Fish on dry land, gasping, lungs hanging out. Eh, drowning. Sure. Yeah, class mascot or no. Personally, I would have fried him up. Yeah, a little olive oil, some breadcrumbs. Uh, why waste a good tilapia, eh? <laughs> well, he lived to tell the tale. So you're... Uh, you're uh, Jenny's dad. Scott um, Sturgeon, right? Uh, Waterstone. Good memory. <laughs> yeah, Dom's always talking about Jen. The way her hand like, shoots up like a rocket when the teach asks a question. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's sweet. I, I don't hear much from Jenny about... Well, about anyone, really. Saves it for her mom, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, Jen's a smart kid, huh? Probably gonna, like, uh, win tonight. Oh, it's not about winning. Very uh, slick poster. Oh, thanks. Uh, did it herself, you know. I mean, she downloaded photos of hamster habitats from... I mean, uh, she will win. You know, definitely. It, it, it's nothing goes, um, you know, awry. Well, Jenny's had fun with her little maze and her little pets. Yeah, she's tipped the win. Baked these adorable seed co What? Ah, uh, I'm noting. The odds could be approximately like 96 to 1 against anyone. And which one? You're joking, right? There's odds on it? Well, you'd be surprised what people bet on. I would? Oh, yeah. The looms. In, what looms in importance when money, you know, is on the... Looms. <laughs> Yeah, Jenny's a bright kid, huh? Oh, we, we try, we try. Uh, Perry gets all the credit, you know, cello lessons, bluebirds, soccer. I'm just the schmuck who pays the bills. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you one of those uh, sideline dads, you know? Yeah, my brother, he refs in my nephew's peewee team. The go goodness of his heart. <laughs> yeah, but the way some of those parents... Uh, not me. I wish I was. I mean, I travel all the time. Jenny is very hands-on. This uh, soup, soup to nuts saved her allowance to buy the hamsters. We give her a tiny allowance. Yeah. She even named them Babar and Celeste. Hmm. Well, even if Jenny does win, and who knows, it's about science. Yeah, well, Dom's no good at science. Well, they're still sprouting. Every kid has his special niche. What's his favorite subject? Recess, he likes. Xbox, he's an ace. Boys, I remember this age. Total distraction. Yeah, maybe so. You probably set high standards. Oh, well, not really. Extra help? Don't they have a, an after school? Oh, we got tools. They don't help. Kid can't find Italy on a map of Europe. Can't find the knob on his bedroom door. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Sets the table, all knives. Bobbed in the spelling bee. <laughs> First word, banana. 
Well, that's a tough one. A B A N A N A N A. Where does it stop? Yeah, Velcro's one sneaker to the other. Goes the wrong way in the relay races. Uh, threw up during a pieing contest. Wow. Yeah, ate the combination to his locker. Jesus, instead of the pies? Yeah, returns library books to the cafeteria. Have you had him tested? Yeah, does poorly on tests. Yeah, wets himself. Uh, uh, no, I mean... His first science project? <laughs> kind of a no, no, no wonder. Uh, how so? Yeah, proving you can't electrocute a goldfish. I see. Well, well you can. They freaking die every time. <laughs> he, uh... He do his own wiring? Uh, he didn't kill himself. Well, that's great. Yeah, what the hell? Goldfish are cheap. <laughs> you know your fish. <laughs> well, I should go lend my moral support, you know, before the judges. You're on uh, Arboretum, right? Uh, maple, 54 maple, robin's egg, uh, blue colonial, high gloss trim, spare key under the hydrangeas. Uh, 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 right. Right. Uh, w were you, was, was Dominic? Dom. Uh, uh, Dom. Dom at Jen's birthday party or? No, no. Maybe the uh, invitation got lost in the mail. Oh, no, of course. <laughs> uh, Perry invited all girls this year. Uh, this is when the girls get smarter and, and the boys, uh, 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 but when they were younger, I, I bet he was, Playdates, uh, uh, Candyland, Twister, Milk and Cookies. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't say. So uh, where'd she go for nursery, Jen? Oh, beginning years. Yeah, Our Lady of Sorrows. Oh, we think it's great. Uh, a diverse umbrella. You know, I've been in the family business since I dropped out of high school, Scott. People like you may consider this a uh, lesser... Um... People... What? No, no, no. You got me all wrong, Vince. Yeah, maybe this is why you don't say hello at Sunday school. Hmm? Now, how was that nice? On the Lord's Day. Uh, Vince, we're Jewish. Ah, well, that must be it, Scott. So what is the uh, uh, family business? Uh, no, don't, don't tell me. Well, it's the import-export business. Sure. Import-exports. <laughs> Who doesn't need those? Mm. Uh, uh, well, great catching up with you, Vince. I, uh, 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 let's get the families together for a barbecue. Uh, uh, when the weather lightens up, I'll have the missus call your missus. Now I really have to get to the... Well, that's uh, Jen's project uh, there, huh? Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, those hamsters keep you up all night, scritching and scratching, scooting around. But Jen's so uh, uh, sweet. She, she wants to keep them till they're old and gray. You know... Hamsters sometimes have um, accidents. <laughs> if only. Get themselves locked in the microwave, for example. Oh, no, <laughs> Mr. Bill. Sure. Fall out of windows. Uh, go to the hamster farm? Or just run away, you know. Bye-bye. Uh, so, so Dom did a second project. Uh, yeah, that one. Yeah, that? that? Wow, that is... Wow, all those flashing. I said to Perry, look at that engineering, geez. Yeah, come out a little too high tech. Uh, wh what does it do? I'm afraid to ask. You don't think that's gonna win? Nah, Scott. You see, uh, Bob and Carol there. Babar and Celeste? It's, uh, it's the cute factor. You know, the smiley face in the cages, those little pigtails, come on. Plus, the judges had to wonder if Dom had help, you know, from a think tank or, or NASA or some such. Uh, it's, it's none of my... Did he? Well, we had a friend help out. I also travel too much. Next year, I hope to have more time to spend with the kid. Um, it'll be a real bonding experience. Yeah, that's one way to look at it, Scott. But, you know, what would really be special tonight... Uh, a, a blue ribbon, I'm guessing, uh, holds some degree of importance. Confidentially, between you and me, Scott, uh, I spent a grand on this project, then bent heavily on the underdog to recoup my investment, capiche? You tell your daughter she's taking a dive. My daughter? Uh, take, a, take a dive in, in the school science fair? Well, I'll get her something nice after.
Uh, she'd like a pony? For God's sake, she's nine. What, what's that going to teach her? Well, a lot. Like uh, how to care for a pony. Um, you've got to be kidding. You're right. You're right. Don't involve her. You, you ice the hamster. Absolutely not. Fine, just kill one. The other one be so overcome with grief you and unable to fill his duties. Whatever. Cut them loose. All I'm saying is, when that bell rings, Bootsy and Carlos... Babar and Celeste. Better not find, remember, which is the entrance and which is the exit to that frickin' maze. You're very funny, Vince. You know, I don't think Babar and Celeste could get lost. See, Jenny's been training them for weeks. They have the hamster equivalent of MBAs. Uh, they get through that maze in like 11 seconds, faster than I could if, if I was being chased by the cops. <laughs> well, some of my best friends are cops. And uh, Principal Gunderson? He puts a cookie into Scott's breast pocket and taps it. Just business. Now, go to it, Scott, or else, like a hamster, I will find the path to your door. Hey, hey, Vince, whoa, I'd like you. I'm just, I mean, is this about money, Vince? Is it really about business? What are you, uh, I'm up to my cojones here, Scott. You don't want to know. Oh, oh, or is it about Dom? Yes, you love him. Who can blame you? Oh, for once, I would love for him to feel the thrill of victory. But like this? What are you teaching him? Well, that every day is a new beginning. That he can shine. That he can amount to more than his dad, you know? Yeah, maybe later we can work on some of that other stuff, you know? But for now, Scott. All right, Vince. As a sign of respect uh, from, from my family to yours, mm -hmm. what? Uh, oh, my God. They can't be judging already. Oh, oh, they're giving Dama, uh, the yellow ribbon. Jesus, Jesus, I'm sorry, Vince. I'm, uh, and they're giving Jenny, Jenny. She's getting the red. Second place, second, really? Then who's, huh? <laughs> you see that worm farm when you come in? <laughs> Jeez. At least they didn't give it to that Bush League Ferris wheel. Popsicle sticks. Ooh, that's original. Uh, sorry about your... Uh... That awaits his fate. Vince steps in to embrace him. You're not gonna kiss me, are you? Uh, my regards to your family and the pets. No hard feelings, huh? Uh, you, still, uh, you still want that pony? Eh, forget about it. Vince, we're just two dads, right? Doing our best for our kids. Uh, catch you at the, the parent ch child uh, talent show? I, I can't wait to see the act you and Dom put together. Yeah, come to think of it, the kid sings like a canary. Gets that from his mom. Yo, Dom! Good job there, Danny boy! Vince grabs a fistful of cookies, exits. The end. Our last play is by playwright Judd Lear Silverman, and it's titled After the Flood. As they bid goodbye to their passengers, Noah and his wife reflect on their experiences on the ark and moving forward with their lives, but also wondering at the differences in their perspectives, how they may choose to view themselves given a restart after such a worldwide catalysm, and if God's covenant with them is really so ironclad. At the rise, we hear a cacophony of animals fading into the distance. Noah and Mrs. Noah are waving as the last of the animals go down the gangplank of the ark. Mrs. Noah is weeping, and even Noah is trying to stifle a tear. <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs> Goodbye! Stay in touch! <laughs> Such dodos! <laughs> That's not a nice thing to say. What? They're lovely birds. Oh, you mean those dodos? I thought you were talking about our sons. Shem, Ham, and Japheth? What have they got to do with birds? Oh, nothing, nothing. 
of course, I'm going to miss them. The birds, I mean. Do you think they'll be all right out out there on dry land? As yeah, sure as the rainbow is God's covenant with us, there will never be such a calamity again. The daughters will be fine. They'll go forth and multiply like they were taught. Lovely creatures. No, now I meant Shem, Ham, and Japheth. <laughs> they were so eager to get off this ark. You'd think there was a fire. Well, of a sort. Uh, I'm sort of think it was a mistake to marry them off and let them not um, interact with the ladies until after we landed. There was no extra room on the boat. If we told the animals they had to hold off, then surely we just... Yeah, I had to refrain as well, yeah, of course. Still, we're on in years. We're young men. It was only 40 days. I think it was the 40 nights that were the problem. Every other animal was lovely on the trip. The boys were the least agreeable. Every Everything I asked them to do, it was, nah, ma. Uh, young man cooped off with lovely young women whom they're not allowed to touch will get, uh, well, well, they'll get cranky. Forty nights. You didn't get cranky. Uh, I'm an old man. I had other things to fill my time. Feeding and caring for all the animals day and night. You never slept. Oh, I catnapped occasionally. The cats never spoke of it to me. I must admit that once we find a good place to settle, I look forward to a good stretch of really good rest. You can rest knowing it was a job well done. I couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> Wouldn't have missed it. I should have painted a picture. Uh-huh. Of all of us together. Yeah, it would have been hard to get everyone to hold still long enough. Capture the moment. Uh, it's take too long to paint. Uh, maybe sketch, yeah. But maybe the Lord will create something someday that can capture the moment. Or at least teach us how to make it. After all, we love pictures back from everybody's journey. You know, spreading across the land, repopulating the planet. Uh, and when the boys... What? Have sons. Mm. Or daughters, you do know that if we're going to repopulate the planet, they're going to have to have some daughters, too. I know that. I looked after all those creatures, remember? You were there, right by my side. Yes, your husbandry and my wifery. I don't think that's actually a word. Speaking of words. Yeah, what? I happened to look at your logbook. Those were my private notes. I didn't plan to, but I was looking for the cargo list to make sure everyone got their rations to go. You had it tucked into your logbook. Still. And there you were, and the boys. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. You know, why did we call him Ham anyway? The boars were quite incensed by that. They, they felt it was insensitive. Don't get off the subject. When I looked at the list, there they all were, but you listed the women as and their wives, like they were just some sort of plus one. Again, we didn't use first names for the animals. You know, it was Mr. Hyena, Mrs. Hyena. We couldn't exactly pull rank. And yet, you never called me by my name, not even in private. Ah, ridiculous. Oh, yeah? Then what is it? It's, um, uh, no, I don't have to tell your own name. Or you can't. Nonsense. I just prefer to think of you as, uh, well, my wife. I have a name. Yeah, yeah, what is it? It's, hmm? it's, um, hmm? See, now I've forgotten, and it's nowhere in your record of the trip. I'll just be Noah and his wife. Yeah, I used to know it. You're as bad as your sons. You might as well call me Nah, Ma. Well, if you like, I will. No, I don't like. Call me 
Zilla. Like my father's second wife. I always thought she was fun. Ada, yeah, she was his first wife. How did Lamech have two wives at the same time? He was a powerful man. Or being a descendant. Of Don't say it. Cain. <laughs> we forgiven. Clearly not forgotten, just because you're of Abel's line. Well, it seems God always has to bring about some kind of catastrophe to move us to another plane. You know, maybe this is what it's all about this time. He was happy. He wasn't happy how we were all behaving, so he wanted to clean house. You know, drain the swamp. Start with a fresh perspective. But why not start from scratch then? I mean, clearly he knows how to create things. Creatures, trees, rocks. If he didn't like us. Well, he'd have put time into building us. It's hard to just throw it all away. So he... Uh, well, he, he kept us as a prototype, you know, so we could start again. Bound to be the same problems. Well, not necessarily. And then they'll have to wipe us out all over again. Are we going to keep having these floods every hundred years? Oh, no, 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 no. He promised. Rainbow, remember? Rainbow. Oh, you. A bunch of shiny colors, and you're impressed. Leave a pot of gold at the end of it, and then, and then, I'd be impressed. Oh, wife. Zilla. I want to be Zilla. Yeah, but is that your name? We're starting over. I can be whomever I choose. Fine, fine. Yeah, maybe I'll be called, um, I say, a lot. I like it. A lot. <laughs> Sounds plotting. I don't want to be Lot's wife. Noah's a nice name. So, Mrs. Noah. But who am I without you then? Well, indeed. No, I'm serious. Was I just a hanger on on this trip? No, you, you were my rock, my, my first mate, everything. All the females would, would tap their husbands. They say, see, see, he listens to her. Why can't you do that? Who said that? They're the warthogs. I heard them talking. And then the hen and the rooster, they knew who was boss. Well, he'd just keep crowing all day and night unless she pecked at him to stop. Good thing, too. Otherwise, we'd never have a minute of quiet and even fewer eggs. Besides, you can't change your name now. They're all out there spreading out across the new land thanks to the Ark and Noah. They'll teach their children, each couple. Eh, except the raven. What a snarky buzzard he turned out to be. Didn't want to leave the Ark. Thought I had it in for him, sending him out there to repopulate. Well, even Mrs. Raven didn't seem to like him much. She might fly the coop when she's free. Yeah, wives will never do that. Oh, you might be surprised. It's a new world out there. Do you really think it's going to be any better than before? Oh, yeah. Yeah. At least for a while. As long as people tell the tale of, of the rains and the ark and, and, and the covenant. As long as they remember, they'll have a sense of purpose. Try harder. Yeah. And God will unleash some horrible world-ending catastrophe if we keep up our end of the bargain. That's what he says. Why is he a, a he? What? You never let me see him when you have your talks. Why does he have to be a he? Oh, now you're just pushing your luck. Is there a Mrs. God who's doing all the work and he's taking all the credit? Maybe God is a woman. No, no, I talk to God. So do I. How do you know God doesn't appear to each of us in a way we understand? Did all our animals' friends think he was a man? Maybe God's a water buffalo, yes. or a ferret, or a hamster. Oh, that's why we called him Ham. He was like a little hamster with all those buck teeth and that funny little nose. <laughs> You're avoiding the discussion. Oh, God is a... Bigger than we can understand. Well, agreed. I don't know why he didn't wash everything away and start completely fresh. 
How do we know that we're even the first try? Maybe God has done this several times. Maybe they will do some kind of pandemic over and over until they get it right. Yeah, I still think he always tries to improve on what he's got. Well, why throw the baby out with the bathwater, huh? Zilla? <laughs> now you're just trying to suck up. Is it working? It might be if you put the right spin on it. Oh, spin. It all comes down to how you tell the tale and who you choose to believe is the hero. Yeah, but... Uh... I, look over there. Look at that beautiful sunset. Yes, but there's a sunset every night. Look, today, there's that rainbow forever. They look off into the distance. She at her sunset. He had his rainbow. The end. Thank you, everybody. Great job, everyone. Yay. Now, the, uh, the show will stay up on our Facebook page, or you may view it on YouTube or on our website. Thank you for your continued support. Next Tuesday, we will present another original play. Please watch our Facebook page for more information. It's one that we know you will enjoy. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching, and see you next week. Bye, everybody.